back to my channel. For today's video, I'm recreating one of my favorite pictures of Lily Rose Depp. This is a couple years old now, but it's one of my favorite looks and they used a ton of Chanel on her. So it was a big excuse for me to go out and buy a bunch of luxury products to try because I really don't have that many uh, high-end products and Chanel, well, everything is gorgeous. So on half of my face, I'm using exact products used or very close. And then on the other side, I'm doing all drugstore picks. So you can always get the glam results using either or, and I really wanted to show that. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more pop culture videos. I do have a lot of TV and movie recreations coming up. I just have been really slow on posting because I am really struggling with my skin and I do find it hard to rewatch footage when I like have a big breakout or whatever. So I'm trying to get over that, but it is hard and I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. So yeah, that's why it's been a little bit slower, but if you have been missing videos from me, then check out my vlog channel because I have posted a couple more over on there and I love that channel, it's super fun, so be sure to subscribe there as well. And anyways, let's just get started with this makeup look. To prep my skin, I have to rave about this product for a sec. This is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enrich Face Base Priming Moisturizer. This is such a luxurious, rich cream that smells amazing and I love it for more oily skin because it is oil free and it's a face formula that hydrates, softens, and cushions skin before makeup. I was talking about this over on my live stream on Instagram, but instead of buying a foundation like the Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua Ultralight Skin Perfecting Sunscreen Makeup in full, ask for a tester or two in your closest shades to really make sure you like the formula and that the color is perfect for you. Definitely give it a try before spending all the money. I was a little worried because it's marketed as a light to medium coverage foundation and I wasn't sure it was going to hide the redness in my skin, but it does and the feeling is super water light in texture, plus the sample lasted me all week because you just need a tiny amount. And for a drugstore option, I'm using one of my favorite lightweight foundations from L'Oreal. This is the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Healthy Luminous Makeup and I like to thin this out on the back of my hand and then just using a tiny amount, I'm stippling this over the other half of my face, just using a tiny amount to match up with the sheer feel of the Chanel foundation. To add a brightness without adding too much more coverage, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter instead of a brightening concealer. This product really picks up the light and adds a little dewy dazzle. I'm a little bit of a cheater because I did use this all over the face because I don't really think there's a drugstore product that gives the same effect, but a similar idea would be the L'Oreal Studio Secrets Magic Lumi Highlighter, plus the foundation and the concealer are the same line. set with a bit of loose powder. I'm using a very minimal amount here because I do want the glow to shine through. And the next Chanel product that I picked up that I really love is the Chanel Le Beige Healthy Glow Sheer Color in shade 30. You can choose your shade as this multi-use powder makeup enhances, brightens, or bronzes the complexion for a custom glow. 30 is a great matte bronzer, and the closest dupe I had was this Sephora Creamy Powder Foundation, and I got this in a similar deeper shade to act as a matte bronzer. And another matte bronzer that's even less expensive is the NYX Cosmetics Matte Bronzer, but these two matched up best in my kit, so I used half and half. Next up, on Lily Rose Depp, the makeup artist Kate Lee used the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Contour Powder to define her stunning prominent cheekbones, so I thought I'd give this product a try and sculpt out similar cheekbones with a little makeup magic. The sculpting powder definitely creates shadow and is great for accenting features that are already there, but I did find it a little too deep for my skin. I used like the smallest amount and I still found it very harsh and it took me really going back and forth with matte bronzer and the contour to really settle on the cheekbones. So that was my experience with this high-end product and a drugstore option that I've used before, which again can still be a little bit tricky making sure the contour doesn't get muddy, is the Mega Glow Contouring Palette from Wet n Wild. For this Lily Rose Depp inspired look, I kept the cheekbones high, a little bit rounded, and then I sculpted out my jawline to be sharper like hers before moving on to a subtle nose contour. I'm adding in similar divots through the center of the nose tip, sides, shading through the nostrils, and then really subtly adding in some shading on the sides for a straighter, thinner nose. I try to keep the nose contouring more subtle because I don't want it to be distracting and the cheeks and liner will really be the focal point of this glamorous look. I'm obsessed with the Chanel blush. I've been using it every day because the packaging is just that classic Chanel feel. It's called Chouet Contrast. But 
a similar shade I had from the drugstore is the Maxi Blush in Wild Card. It looks quite a bit darker next to the Chanel blush, but if you use it very minimally, you can get that similar rosy shade that's ultra lightweight as well. Moving on to brows, I decided to try out a new technique that I saw from the Goss Makeup Artist channel, so I'll have it linked in the information button, but here I'm just using the Anastasia Dip Brow to create very full, natural looking brows. This was my second time trying this technique, so I don't think I'm a pro at it, but you just take the dip brow on a very small brush. I chose this Sephora Tiny Straight Brush because for me, the smaller the brush, I find it easier to make brow-like strokes. So you dip it in the pot, wipe off excess on either side of the brush using the lid from the Anastasia Dip Brow, and then create a few strokes before dipping in again. If there isn't enough product on the brush, the strokes will not appear as defined or realistic. So let me know if you like the look of these unplucked inspired brows like Lily Rose Depp, and if you have any tips on creating brows like this, let me know. And then to lighten them up to match her coloring a bit, I am using the Benefit 3D Brow Tones to add in some highlights in the shade too. Finally, I'm still following the brow tutorial and I picked up the Anastasia Brow Pencil in Base 1 to clean up the brows and subtly bring in a couple highlights so that the drawn on hairs pop with a bit more dimension. And I also use this brightening base on my lid and you could just use a concealer instead, but I added a bit of a winged out shape to follow later on. And next high-end product, I tried out the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Highlighter in Balm Duo. This is actually my first Pat McGrath product. I don't know how that has taken me so long, but check out this cool packaging it comes in. I use in. the highlight side in the shade Nude minimally on my cheekbones, nose, and above the brow arch. You can take the balm on top for an extra glow, but I decided to just follow the image and I liked it more subtle um, with just the one end, but I am going to experiment with this product more. And finally, for the bulk of the eyeshadows, I just went with one Wet n Wild palette. Artist Kate Lee used a couple single shadows from Chanel, but they were actually sold out um, of both of the shades that I was looking to get, so I figured Drugstore was calling my name. Take the transition color and start to shade from above the tear duct, partially through the nose bridge in a rounded, exaggerated crease shape, faded into a soft B. Take a mix of the burgundy and deepest shade and start to add dimension in the inner and outer crease shape, plus adding a bit through the bottom lash line. All over the lid, we want a pink iridescent base. I chose the Maybelline Color Tattoo Concentrated Crayon in Pink Parfait. And the center of the lid is super important. You want to find a brightening eyeshadow with a baby pink shift. There are tons of options like this. I chose the Too Faced shadow in the shade Clutch Your Pearls. I personally love layering cream and reflective shadows for a long wear and an extra pop, but an all-in-one drugstore product that gives a similar pop is the Milani Bella Eyes Gel Powder Eyeshadow in Bella Pink. And I was just sent this Benefit Cosmetics Roller Liner Liquid Eyeliner. I was excited to really put this to the test because I do love the Benefit Roller Lash Mascara and I needed a true matte liquid eyeliner for this look, but I actually don't usually go with applicators like this very often. It did take me a week to kind of figure out the best pressure to apply this liner for the cleanest line. But now that I have the hang of it, I do really like this product. And a similar pen I have is the Maybelline New York Liquid Liner in Black. But my best tip for liner is just to start out in the center of the lid and start to create a line that is thinner than you want it to end up as. And then create the wing, which I think is the hardest part in getting that precise tip. But once you have it, connect the line, thickening up that center portion as you go, and then string the lines all together to the inner corner. The Chanel Cream Eyeliner in Hyper Black was originally used, but I just suck at gel liner and prefer liquid. And then take a deep black liner and add this to the waterline. I added a bit of shine from the Wet n Wild shadow under the liner there. Brightened up above the wing to make it pop even more. I didn't find this was deep enough and then did go in with a gel liner. This is the NYX gel liner and it really did add that extra deepness. And add some dramatic lashes. You do want these to be 
pretty full in volume because you don't want to lose them under the huge liner. And this pair I got from Sephora, but my favorite drugstore lashes are the Kiss Lashes. Finally, let's move on to lips. The makeup artist used the Kevin Aquan Flesh Tone Lip Pencil in a medium nude beige. They were sold out, so I'm using another similar luxury pick, one of my all-time favorite liners, the iconic nude from Charlotte Tilbury, and this smooths over the texture of your lips for a seamless finish that really lasts, and the shape we want is overlined in the cupid's bow in a rounded shape, tapered into the natural lips, and I extended my lips a little farther for a widened sexy pout. Similar liner that I love as well is the NYX liner in Nude Beige. Add a little mascara, just need a touch with these awesome lashes. And finally, the perfect finish to any look, a Chanel lipstick. The shade Chanel Rouge Coco Ultra Hydrating Lip Color in Catherine, which is what was really used, wasn't sold at any of the locations near me, but I picked up this shade, which looked perfect to the recreation picture, and this matte, creamy, brightening peach just adds to the whole look. A similar shade from Revlon is from their new matte lipstick collection, and it's called Smoked Peach. It's slightly deeper, but will add that touch of peach and a matte finish. And there's the complete Chanel slash high-end Lily Rose Depp look featuring drugstore dupes and options to recreate this look at any price point. I was very impressed with all the Chanel makeup I tried. My personal favorites are first, the lipstick when paired with a nude liner, the bronzing powder, and the blush. And I'd recommend the Chanel Aqua Ultra Light Skin Foundation for generally clear skin that wants a really nice polish. So let me know if there's a product shown that you're dying to try out, and I hope you like this look. inspired look and if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more beauty videos I totally wanted to do a full transformation and wear um, brown eye contacts today but I put them in and my eyes were like watering like crazy and I knew liner was just not gonna work with that so I just went with my own eye color but let me know in the poll if you prefer when I switch up my eye color or just leave it natural please vote it'll really help me out and also if you try out this look please tag me because I love to feature you guys in my videos so here's a couple of my favorite recreation photos. And to complete this look, still inspired by Lily Rose Depp, I added a little tie scarf, which to me is just like cute and French. So I have a big collection of these, and this one's just a paisley print. I just have a tank because it is hot under these lights, and uh, left my hair in loose waves. But her look was actually this bright pink dress, which I thought looked stunning on her, and a low bun. So that's some great prom inspo, or if you have a formal coming up. But anyways, I will see you guys in my next video and hope everyone is having a great start to 2019. And again, check out the vlog channel if you're interested and I'll see you in my next video.